could describe Olaf in three words, which would you pick? Personable, professional, and witty. That's what I think of Olaf. I think he's, he's visionary, he's comprehensive, um, and uh, he's caring. Compassionate, humble, and extraordinarily dedicated. Compassionate, caring, and uh, a true mentor. I guess that's four words. It's hard to describe Dr. Anderson in, with respect to one attribute because he has many. Uh, but uh, Dr. Hajar mentioned several. One is his professionalism. One is his tenacity and determination. But uh, I think just as important are his humanistic values. Uh, I think I speak for our institution, but for the leadership of all of the institutions, we are extremely grateful for Dr. Anderson, for the leadership he has provided. It's been unparalleled, and this is one area which is a real diamond, not a diamond in the rough, it's a real sure enough diamond and it is the best MD, PhD program in the country. So Olaf and I go way back. Uh, I met Olaf when he was a fledgling director uh, 15 years ago. And I, I was a relatively senior MD-PhD student, MD -PhD student in the program. And this newbie came over and wanted to take over the program with this Ruthie person. And all of us were very skeptical about what would happen with this. Uh, and uh, he turned out to be incredible from moment one. So we broke him in, myself and my classmates, and it was a wonderful experience. And even more incredible to come back after so many years and to see how far he's come even since that successful beginning. He was the director of the physiology program um, at that time and he relinquished it to other people in the department. And as the time went on, as time went on, the deans of the medical school here had recognized his administrative talents and when um, Ralph and Carl had stepped down uh, Ralph Nachman and Carl Nathan had stepped down from the directorships. Um, Olaf was selected um, to do uh, this very, very important job, which was to um, perpetuate and develop further our MD, PhD program. And as Dean Gatto mentioned, he's done a superb job. July 1st, 1996 was the first day I began six months as acting dean. And the very first thing I did, because it was the most important, was to go ask Olaf if he would become director of the tri -I program. And he accepted on the spot, and it was a gift to all three institutions, and I'm still grateful uh, to Olaf 15 years in. Olaf then uh, really started to develop this beautiful program, which you see today how it works. A few years later, Olaf got the first critique back from NIH reviewing the program. And with this, it was a fantastic review, but the only negative thing they put in was, Olaf, you are doing too many things yourself. Look for help. And Olaf approached me and said, Jochen, uh, you can say no and sleep it over. But could you imagine to uh, become associate pro uh, director of the program? And uh, I wanted to know what that meant. He is an incredible mentor and has been uh, for many years. I feel like he's still my mentor and I was very honored 
and still am that he asked me to be associate director of the program last year and it's been a wonderful experience and it's such a pleasure to be working uh, with him as it was to work uh, with him as a director of the program. It's not only me, but I think that's an institution. To me, Olaf has always been an institutional rock. You know, the truly remarkable thing about Olaf is the fact that uh, he's had to bring three organizations together, and I'm sure others will comment on this as well. But, you know, for most MD, PhD directors, one institution is enough. And uh, Olaf has to deal with three. Uh, and somehow he manages to um, bring them together in a remarkably amicable manner and um, uh, to me that's probably the most remarkable thing about him. I don't know anyone else who has taken institutions, uh, three institutions uh, like the ones that we have here at the, uh, uh, on the Upper East Side and put together an MD, PhD program between the three and make it work so well and so efficiently. The program is the students in it at any one moment and every one of them has a difficult course, a lot of adjustments to go through, decisions to make and Olaf is uh, deeply informed about each of them. That's always impressed me. That's what makes him an ace. Which makes me very proud of Olaf is the way that he treats students. The way that he um, goes to bat for the MD, PhD students at things like pro promotion and graduation. He defends them. And he, he also, um, what's the word I want to use? Um, he also tells them when they're not in line. He's very honest about that. He's a very honest person. But for personal reasons why I really um, admire him is what he's done for minorities in MD-PhD. I, I think that the fact that we're one of the leading institutions to have as many minority students as MD-PhDs is really a testimony to his really going out to get them and really being very sincere about it and being honest about it and, and it's, it's true. I think that he has grown tremendously with the position uh, he's, his expertise on all aspects of it are remarkable. I've seen his ability to select students and that's why we have such a wonderful bunch of students this year. Uh, I see how he's increased the different programs uh, looking for support for women and uh, minorities and disadvantaged students and uh, the recent award that he won is a reflection of that. Um, he's been uh, just growing. I think one thing is he always listens to the students and he takes his cues from the students and that is a really remarkable attribute. He listens, he believes, and he makes changes on that basis and there's not a lot of uh, people who do that or do that as well as he does. Well, it's um, <clears throat> how uh, thoroughly he knows every single person in the program and they're all uh, the most important, therefore equal. <laughs> and um, <clears throat> I think without that, the program couldn't have accomplished the attainment of stability that's allowed it to build and maintain its quality. I know that other MD-PhD students have similar stories of the help and support that Olaf has provided during very difficult times. The MD-PhD program is a long program and a lot of life events, both good and bad, happened while we were students here. Yet no matter what happened, we could always feel comforted and reassured, knowing that Olaf and the program would be there for us. He always has our back and our best interests at heart. I don't think we can ever thank Olaf enough for his extraordinary leadership and his dedication to all of the students in our program. So, um, you know, he's a, a man who strikes different people in very different ways. When I first met him, I thought, this is an extremely sober and serious man with an extraordinarily focused passion for 
the grandma's side and channel. Uh, and I think that's true, but there's another Olaf that's equally valid, and a man, uh, a natural nurturer with a warm sense of humor who's actually an ebullient enthusiast for a diverse range of biomedical science that our, our students and faculty uh, generate together. Um, it was in the late 70s when I came to this institution. I met uh, Olaf for the first time in the Griffiths Faculty Club where he was always hanging out and he used to wear this Viking hat because he told everybody he was really a Viking and he had sunglasses on and it was a, during a Christmas party type of interaction. In those days, um, we used to, fa the faculty would get taped um, so it could be in the Christmas show. And not all of the performances were live in Olin Hall and they were doing some sort of comical thing I can recall and Olaf was um, making, a, doing a parody of some people and I got to meet him this way and um, I've always had that first impression of Olaf um, as being, you know, a very um, fun-loving jokester kind of guy. Boy was I wrong. He's nothing like that. He's a very serious scientist who took um, his administrative role in the graduate school very seriously. I like the, the way that the students portrayed him in one of the Christmas shows <laughs> when he goes, er, er. I thought that was hilarious. I think about that. Sometimes I look at him and I think about that and I crack up. And he's wondering why I'm laughing. But that's why I'm laughing a lot. Because I think it's really funny. He's, he's a, he has a very good sense of humor, as you know, of course. Well, uh, I uh, have always been intrigued by Olaf in that he makes this beverage every holiday season. I believe the name is Grog. Um, and I have to say, I've gone to a few of the MD-PhD uh, holiday parties and I've almost passed out on the floor after <laughs> drinking that stuff. <laughs> and I know Olaf, I know Olaf is chugging that stuff somewhere. <laughs> so, listen, it's, it's terrific stuff and I have to get the recipe from him sometime. I hear he likes to barbecue a lot in Sutton Terrace. Um, but other than that, of being a barbecuer, I really don't know what Olaf is like personally. But professionally, he's a wonderful colleague. So he has passion number one, which is um, his, his love of rigorous science, and passion number two, which is enabled by and magnified uh, by passion number one, which is his joy in recruiting and helping people who love rigorous science. And so this becomes a, a virtuous cycle. So Olaf, uh, keep the wheel turning because you're the engine that's driving a lot of lives and a lot of labs in very good directions. I have one piece of advice, and um, that is continue to do this job for another 15 years. The best advice I can give to him is to stick with it. Keep doing what he's doing, and to stick around and help us out, because we need his wisdom, we need all of his professional love. Yes, don't retire. <laughs> That's the advice. You, you just said it. Another 15. Go for it, Olaf. What would be extremely valuable to your colleagues and your peers across the country is if you would write up your experiences here, follow the people who have come through the program, something about their careers and what they have done, and try to distill this down into a, a long paper or a monograph or even a, a short book about uh, the MD-PhD program at Wild Cornell, Rockefeller University, and Memorial Sloan Kettering, I think that would be an extremely valuable contribution to academic medicine and would be an important part of your legacy.